Hello guys, I'm gonna show you how to make gear racks. I would say they are the easiest to build compared to other gears. It's pretty much just like a gear with infinite teeth. I will explain the advantages of them and how to calculate their speed. Since they can't slip at all, you can reach insane accelerations. I put an accelerometer on these cars. And if you pause it at the right time, you can see it gets to about 210 Gs, which means it goes to the top speed in five milliseconds. But of course, you can't drive it anywhere, so it's mostly pointless to make a car like this. All right, let's jump right into the tutorial. Here are a few sizes so you can imagine how big it will turn out. Place a long block like this and one on top of it. We will make a rack with tooth size 3 and also a gear after. This script is available on my GitHub, so just download it and run it. If you can't, then you can search up HTML viewer and copy the code into it, and it should work. Now grab the first amount in scale number, which is 4.6 for me, and scale this side with it. If the number is negative, then scale down. Grab the amount in scale after the tooth length and scale both sides like this. If it's negative again, scale it inwards. Now use mirror and do as I do, mirror it two times upwards. Now always enter 12 here and rotate as I do. Delete the upper ones. Mirror these inwards and delete the outer ones. And the last thing to do is to slightly extend this. Now you can also change the thickness. You can also make this thinner to save on blocks, but I'm gonna leave it like this. You can also check if you did it right by checking the dimensions in the scale with this at the end of the script. Now you can clone this using the clone distance number in the script for as many times as you want. If the trowel arrows are at an angle, then reselect the vertical piece to fix it. You can really make it as long as you can. I even made one that goes to the end. Well, it would go to the end if it wasn't for this pot blocking me. And our gear rack is completed. Now we have to make a gear, which is actually harder to make than the rack. I also made a script for gears. It's also on my GitHub, so just download the gear, HTML. Because we chose module three, this gear also has to be module three. So the gear diameter has to be a multiple of three in order for it to have a full number of teeth. I chose diameter 60, which means we will get 20 teeth. You can place your gears planning circle like this. It's just a 60 by 60 square, which roughly represents the gear. Now, in order for it to mesh nicely, move it down by the module, AKA teeth size, which is three for my example. Now we just build the gear on the center of this square using the script. To quickly find the center of the square, enter a big number in the move section and place it without hitting enter. Now we just grab the first amount in scale from the script and so on. Now we place the blocks for the teeth. Scale it on both sides, and again, if it's negative, then scale it inwards. Now, I will just make it the same thickness as the rack.
Now the only thing left is to clone and rotate it to make it into a full gear and then test it. I will just move it all a bit so it's not in the way of the rack's teeth. If yours is sticking together, then you can make the teeth shorter. Since it won't make a big difference, it's a really good quick fix. Now I will just add a wheel like this to test it. Since the rack was built on the ground, we have to lift it up by a bit, or else it's going to be stuck forever. I moved everything up by 0.2 studs. I realized there's a simpler way to test it. Delete the wheel and place a hinge facing into the gear like this. Place a pilot seat rotated like this somewhere on the side of the gear. Now just save it and climb onto the pilot seat and unanchor everything but the hinge. And as we can see, it works. The rack obviously isn't guided, so it has slipped away from under the gear. And to guide the rack, I will just add some ice on the sides, but you can do it many other ways too, like with springs, for example, which are really good. I moved the ice 0.2 studs away from the rack, so there's some clearance. After you added the ice, you can go ahead and try it again. Now it works forever, well, for as long as the teeth are meshing. Now you can go ahead and have fun with it. If something isn't clear to you, then ask me in the comments. Also, racks can be a replacement for pistons. They move way more smoother, but they have their own disadvantages, so I wouldn't recommend using them unless you really specifically need it. For example, here, racks move way smoother, and I can pick up these boxes. If I replace the racks with pistons, then the titanium boxes just slip out from the claw, even if there's enough friction. If you're really bored, you can make an entire highway to the end out of them. It takes quite a while to make it, and honestly, it's not even worth it. Well, I guess you can use it for towing because it's pretty strong. You can obviously make the steering mechanism, which is fairly common in real-life cars, and finally, how to calculate the speed of the gear rack. The formula is wheel speed of the gear times the gear radius, which is half the diameter. So for the example before, this would be 30 times 2, because pilot seat is spinning at wheel speed 2, and we get 60, so that means it's moving about 4 times as fast as walking speed and slightly faster than the boat motor. We can sort of make a cannon or a launcher like this. When you turn off a magnet, then anything inside of it will get launched away at 500 studs per second. At 500 studs per second speed, you will go up by 637 studs, because gravity eventually slows you down. Here, I made this vertical launcher with a gear rack. So I wonder how high this one launches you. Wow, this is way higher than the magnet. After measuring how high I went and doing some math, it means that this rack got launched upwards at 990 studs per second. If we calculate how fast it should have been going, then we get 20 radius times wheel speed 50, which is 1,000 studs per second. 990 compared to 1,000 is only 1% off, which is surprisingly accurate and means that this formula works. 
If anyone is going to recreate this, I used 5 stacked wheels and module 2 with diameter 40. Thank you guys so much for watching.